All right, boys and girls, where last we left off, Odysseus and his men are on the island of Helios, the sun god. And his men have promised him that they will not touch the cattle or the sheep. And he has told them that it, that's fine, but if they do, they're all going to die. Yikes. We'll see if they can withstand chapter seven, the tempest. In the darkest period of the night, just before dawn, Zeus sent a terrible storm to the island of the sun god. Fierce wind shook the trees. Cold rain poured down from the heavens. The Greeks scrambled into a huge cave near the shore. They huddled together, listening to the roar of the storm. At the first light of dawn, as the wind and rain raged on, Odysseus ordered his men to drag their ship ashore and pull it into the cave with them. Once the ship was safely in the cave, Odysseus gathered his crew around him. Friends, we cannot leave the island this morning, he told them. So I command you again, do not touch the sheep or cows that belong to Helios, the sun god. He sees all and he hears all. He will know at once if you try to feast upon his treasures. We have all the food we need now in our ship. As soon as this tempest ends, we will sail on. The Greek warriors promised to do as Odysseus commanded, but day after day, fierce storm winds from the south and east pummeled the sun god's island. The days grew into weeks and still the tempest did not end. Never did the storm cease long enough for the Greeks to set sail. For over a month, Odysseus and his men remained stranded on the island. At first, they ate only the food given them by Circe, but when those provisions were gone, the men were forced to roam the stormy coast, spearing fish and birds and anything else they might eat. As the tempest raged on and on, Odysseus and his men could not find enough food. Each day they ate less. Each day they grew weaker. Hunger gnawed at their bellies and despair seized their souls. Odysseus grew more and more frightened that the men would lose control of themselves. He feared their hunger would eventually drive them to slave the cattle and sheep of the sun god, and he knew that the sun god's anger would bring death upon them all. Early one morning, while the others were still sleeping, Odysseus slipped from the cave. He ran through the storm and took shelter in a solitary outcropping of rock near the shore. Odysseus knelt on the ground. He raised his arms and called out to the gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus. He begged them to show pity. Give us courage to withstand our hunger and despair, he prayed. Send us fair weather so we might sail away soon. Help us follow the counsel of Tiresias and overcome temptation. As Odysseus prayed, a great drowsiness overtook him. He closed his eyes. His head fell forward and he sank into a deep, dreamless sleep. Chapter 8. Punishment of the Gods Odysseus woke with a start. He could tell from the morning light that several hours had passed since he had fallen asleep. With a feeling of dread, he leapt from the ground and started running back to his men. As Odysseus neared the cave, his heart sank. The smell of burning meat feel, filled the air. Odysseus was seized with rage and horror. Rushing into the cave, he grabbed the first man he came upon. What have you done, he demanded. Have you disobeyed my orders and defied the gods? We were following Eurylochus, the man said. He told us that starvation was the most terrible of all deaths. He urged us to slay the cattle of the sun god. He said we could appease Helios by building a great temple in his honor when we returned to Ithaca. Odysseus nearly wept with despair. We were so hungry we could not stop ourselves, the man said. We killed the best of the cattle and roasted them over the fire. Odysseus cried out in agony. He fell to his knees and called to the gods. Zeus and all immortal gods, why did you allow me to fall asleep? I begged you to give my men strength and courage. Now they have defied my command and slain the cattle of Helios. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us all. But Odysseus knew his prayers were in vain. The rage of Helios was surely more powerful than the anguished pleas of a mere mortal. Odysseus imagined that the sun god might threaten never to shine upon the earth again unless the gods helped him take his revenge. Odysseus rose to his feet and looked about the cave. 
The scene was horrible and unnatural. The hides of the slain cattle crawled across the ground. On the spits, the roasting meat bellowed like living beast. Odysseus's men cowered before him. As he glared at their terrified faces, the rage drained from his heart. It was too late for rage now. The cattle of Helios were dead, and the men who had slain them would soon die also. Nothing less, Odysseus knew, would appease the sun god's anger. For the next six days, as the winds blew harshly outside the cave, Odysseus's men feasted on the sun god's cattle. Finally, on the seventh day, the storm abruptly ceased. At Odysseus's command, the Greeks pulled their ship from its shelter and pushed off into the water. A gentle west wind caught their sail, and they headed once again for the distant shores of Ithaca. For a time, it seemed possible that the sun god's rage had been forgotten. But once the black ship had sailed onto the open sea, Odysseus's worst fears were realized. Helios had indeed turned all the other gods against the Greeks, and together the gods took their revenge. First, mighty Zeus sent a black storm cloud across the sky, darkening the waters and turning the day into night. Then Poseidon, god of the seas, sent tumultuous waves crashing over the sides of the ship. Then Aeolus, the wind god, sent a howling wind that blew with such fury that it cracked the ship's mast. The mast and rigging fell on top of the helmsman, crushing his skull. Zeus shook the sky with thunder and hurled down a blazing bolt of lightning. The lightning struck the ship's hull, spinning it around and around on the water. All of Odysseus's men were thrown from the deck into the dark, angry sea. Watching helplessly from the ship, Odysseus saw his men tossed on the waves like seabirds. He watched as, one by one, they sank beneath the water and drowned. Finally, all of Odysseus's men had disappeared under the waves, and Odysseus was completely and terribly alone. Mm. What lesson can we learn from that part of the story? Odysseus told his men not to eat the cattle of the sun god, and they did it anyways, and then they were punished, just as he said they would be. So what's the lesson that we learn? Maybe something about greed, something about being weak, being selfish. What do you think? What do you think the author's trying to teach us? Tomorrow, we'll finish our book as we start chapter nine, only Odysseus. Answer that question on the next slide and I'll see you back here tomorrow.